Hi everybody, welcome back to Cricket Bat Info. My name is Mark and today what we'll be looking at is a brand new for this current season, 22-23. What I have here today is a Grey Nichols Prestige. This is the first Prestige I've ever reviewed on the channel and it just so happens to be this year when they've gone ahead and changed the label. So I'm actually really happy to see both of these things in the flesh. One is the Australian season. They've got a three band checker uh, and that's new for the 2022-23 season. And also this is the first time I've reviewed the Prestige, which is the I guess the lower grade bat for uh, amateur players. So I think it Crest, then Prestige, then Ultimate, Silver and Legend. Uh, but I always get those two confused. So that's the bat there. So this has been sent in by Aiden. He's a under 16s player. And his dad was is an absolute legend of the first club I played many, many, many years for, Hectorville. And uh, he was an absolutely brilliant left-hand batsman. This is his son's bat, and he's also a left-hander. And he's just graduating into his first senior bat. So he's gone down and convinced dad to buy him this particular bat. I'll just cut to some website pages. So this is one page off the Grey Nichols site. So this has Handcraft in Australia using Superior English Willow. It doesn't actually say grade uh, just superior power curve face enhanced feel new design mid profile even bow large edges rounded face this one's natural finish and then i found the other page because i said to gaz oh you might not need this one knocked in mate and because uh, this one down here said play now so that's a new thing that apparently they're pre-prepared pressed oiled knocked i asked gn and they'll come out of the factory with a tow guard and scuff sheet so this is the one we've got is a natural finish so then I went looking just at uh, what's happening around the traps as far as different retailers. Cricket Centre, would they have it? 625 with play now. You can see that there. And where else did I go? And I went to Kingsgrove as well. They were 600 with zip pay. Don't tempt me. 28 to 210. No, I don't want to do that. And that also says preparation is play now. Extra tech applied in the factory. Last one is where he probably bought it, which is the cricket warehouse so cricket warehouse they had f man you can't hit any websites without being hassled new arrival and this does say factory prepared as well but that bat's definitely not been factory prepared that's a natural so and they say there's 10 percent off the price shown so they seem to be the cheapest at the moment there you go and they've also got zip pay and we'll continue on so firstly you can see we've got some different uh, embossing here handcrafted in australia it now says underneath there we've got some gold highlights which i actually really do like i think that looks really stunning prestige is a sticker we've got the b spoke uh, with the uh, southern cross there this is a grade one bat for sure one two three four five six screens and a little bit of heartwood running down the left handers inside edge which is exactly how matthew hayden had it once again like all grey nickels we've got the stamp and on the back here we've got the stickers as you can see them here so i'll read it from this side designed and handcrafted in australia premium english willow pressed for performance so lots of marketing stuff all over these this time and obviously here prestige bespoke that's all embossed this is nicely textured up here Nicely textured emboss, and of course we've got the Australian made sticker, which you would have seen on those replica bats uh, that I did, the Elite, where they had the really big ones down here in the toe. Well then now all this season you'll have the Australian made sticker to tell you that this bat's actually been made in Australia. And this one has a Y, I was sure that this year was a Z. The way you can tell the Australian ones is it's in a circle. The Indian ones will definitely be in a square and generally the Indian made ones will be on both sides in a square. As you would have seen by the Alpha Gen 1 5 star, the Indian bats are actually doing this as well. And I did explain in that video, but I'll do it again. I have been saying for a long time that I thought this was a zinc oxide tape, like you would have a medical tape, but it doesn't actually turn out that that's the case. What this actually is, there's glue applied to the raw handle, and this is just a wrap. And then obviously down at this end here, they do the binding underneath. I'm not going to wind that up, so wind that down. So this has got that ultra slim uh, grip that I've despised over the years. This is the same grip that came on my um, Ultimate about five years ago. So really, really light and really, really sticky. But because of that, if your gloves are dirty, you're just going to cover this in 
in muck. The handle feel itself is, I would call that a semi-oval. Not as oval as the ones that probably have been made by Stuart Cransbill, although they seem to be a bit oval again. And this one's rounder. But I think that this is more like a bat that, you know, maybe a younger player would come into. Now, the average price for these seems to be around that $600 mark. But yeah, it's actually like a nice quality grain. There's only a tiny little pin, pin knot here. There's no real knots along the side here. This is a good quality piece of willow. And looking at the toe from this side here, you can see those grains are nice and pronounced. That's a sign of good quality. They're fairly straight, a little bit crooked off to the side, but that's generally uh, a bat that's going to be uh, a good performer. Gauge out and we'll put that on. Now have a look at that. That's actually quite a tall spine. Yeah, Aiden, you've got a really big bat for your age and it looks to be something around the 37 mil edge. As far as narrowing, I can't see any real narrowing there, but we will do those measurements as I normally do. Look at last year's thylacine. This sort of shape was, was pretty much the theme, uh, but maybe just that sticker has come down a little bit more and sometimes that can make it look a little bit different. The spine sort of peaks out just before the end of the toe. So it's really a mid middle, uh, but it carries that spine down into a lower position. Um, you're gonna get good value right through that area there. There's plenty of wood. Uh, as far as finish, I think Gaz told me that he gave this a sand before he handed it to me. Now I can't actually tell that because he was gonna oil it and then he couldn't find his linseed oil, but I, he's actually done quite a good job. I can't actually see any uh, sanding marks there. So he's probably used a very, very fine grit, but the back is the original finish out of the factory. I think in the past I've said things about the finish. I don't know what that is. That could be Gaz himself has done that, but it looks it looks pretty good. For the price range, you know, that's pretty outstanding value. Um, it comes with a, ca a case that's been sitting here the whole time. Bow, let's have a look. Yep, definitely a bow there. You can see it, it's quite pronounced actually. See how it curves. Uh, off from a mid position towards the toe. That's actually quite, that's actually quite good for GN. Uh, their bowing has definitely got uh, more aggressive over the last few seasons. And as far as the face camber, I don't think I showed that. And the power curve face, as I put that down there, you'll see that's pretty much flush. So that's a five millimeter face. And you can also see here that in the factory, they're always boning those edges uh, nicely so they're not left um, really big so that that affects obviously the measurements we get some unscrupulous brands will offer you 102 mil I saw one today JP Gavin on his Instagram it was an SG it was 102 point something millimeters at width on the back and uh, yeah you know like it's just probably had sharp edges as well I'm gonna start with the edge 34.6, so it's not huge, but as I've said to you before, about 35 is what the bat makers used to traditionally say was all you needed. 14.7 at the top of the shoulder, center of the splice. 39.6, so that's really good. There's a lot of wood carrying down into that handle, less uh, problems with twisting, and cracks through the handle, things like that. So that's a good design choice there. Down here at the toe, 21.6, quite good. Center of the toe, 26.5. So not a huge amount of wood left down there, but this bat is actually trying to create balance. So leaving too much wood down here would destroy that balance. Now, the other thing that I've said many times before with GNs, because of the choice of what they do with the, the binding and these really light grips, they can save nearly an ounce just there. So they can put that into the shape. If you put a regular grip on it, well, then you're probably only gonna save just that original 0.7 of an ounce for the binding, so. And I know all this because I've actually been such a nerd that I've tried it myself just to compare it, binding versus non-binding. We'll give the spine height a measurement, but I'm guesstimating that we're looking at about a 66 mil spine and it's quite high in the middle, 65.1. And we'll measure the width of the bat, 107.9, no issues whatsoever. And we'll measure the back, 107.3. So no issues whatsoever. Next, I'll do my pickup. So I'll just step away for a sec. Uh, you will still be able to hear me on the microphone. Uh, been really impressed since I changed this microphone. So I'm holding it in my normal batting stance and 
the bat feel, I would describe it as medium. It's supposed to be a light feel, but I, I just feel that the not enough weight up in the handle area is robbing it of a little bit of pickup. To me, this feels high 2829. Now I know Aiden actually put an extra grip on himself. Uh, so let's see what it actually is on the scales. It's 28.7, yeah. So that was, that's about what it feels like. I wouldn't describe it as a light pickup. It picks up its weight and easily changed just by adding another grip. Uh, obviously that would change the dead weight. Now the, the question is, a 15 year old, it's a, definitely a bat he can grow into. He's told dad that he can use it and it feels fine. I probably would have thought that maybe 2.6 would be maximum. Instead of adding an extra grip, remove this grip and just put the original grip on and maybe add some counterbalance up here just to give him a little bit of a lighter pickup without adding too much weight to the bat. Um, because you know, you add that extra grip, she's 2.10. I guess what I'm getting at is when you're buying a bat, go on feel. Now Aiden's picked up this bat and he loves the feel of it. So nothing's gonna ruin that for him. And if he can make runs with it and play all his shots, then it doesn't really matter what his age is. Some kids are, you know, they're strong, they're fit. But that there is actually the playing weight that I used to a 2.8.7. That's, that's what I would have gone to, perfect. But as I said to you, with the way they do the handles here, normally this would be a 2.95 bat. When I showed you the Puma Tribute, this is the sort of things that bat makers will do to try and compensate, to try and take weight out in certain places of the bat to put more into the hitting area. So I, th I think it's a good compromise, adding a grip. If you don't feel it, it's not such a big deal. We've been doing it for 30, 40 years. It's not sort of rocket science. Don't get too hung up on these sort of things. The, the ultimate thing you wanna try and have is that when you go into the nets, you're not thinking about the weight of the bat. You're th watching the ball. So yeah, if you get too superstitious about little things like this, then you're missing the point, which is to try and put into your hands a bat that just lets you play your natural game. I guess the next thing we've got to do is the tap up. Top here. And it starts to almost go almost immediately. It sounds nice actually right there. As we head to middle, And look at that, that's actually, that's pinging really nicely. Look at, not so much the sound, but the rebound. Every bat sounds different. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe this as a heavy press bat at all. Uh, it's definitely not as soft as some of the bats from uh, SS say, but uh, it feels much closer to uh, with a point where it, it has you have less to do um, down here you can you can hear that softness so definitely needs work around the toe here and you just need to do a little bit on the edges um, but there's plenty of performance there and it runs through the length of the blade so very well done and $600 it's great value big spine not wasting wood on the edges. Thank you very much, Aiden, for providing the channel with a bat for us to review. And I'm looking forward to your da dad come picking that up and we can have some beers together and chat about the old days. So that's really nice. That is a Grey Nichols Prestige. It's been great to finally review a Prestige and add that to the collection. There's probably over 30 Grey Nichols bats that I've reviewed and filmed uh, in the past six years. Probably more actually, So, but I haven't done the Prestige yet and I don't think I've done the Crest either. Thank you very much. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and we'll see you on the next video. See you everyone.